Hello everybody, I'm Paul Ducklin. This is Naked Security Live. Behind the camera is my colleague, Alice. Over to you to kick us off. Hi guys, yeah, welcome along. So today we are covering a story all about a guest who stayed in an Airbnb recently. I think it was in New Zealand and discovered a hidden camera. So Duck, can you tell us more about this? Yes, actually the family is from New Zealand. They're on a world tour and they were in Ireland when this happened. So they weren't in a position just to get in the car and go home. There they are. That's the story on Naked Security if you want to go and find it. Now, amusingly, that picture is the family. That was taken with the hidden camera that fortunately the guy managed to connect to. So as evidence, he actually proved that he was being spied upon by deliberately spying upon himself and taking the snapshot so that he could prove that it was happening. And of course, that got a lot of alarm bells ringing and led to people asking us a lot of questions about, my goodness, what do I do? So is this something that is more risky with Airbnb over normal hotels? Well, if you go on Naked Security and you look for hidden camera shock horror stories uh, in hotel rooms or B&Bs, you will find more stories about Airbnbs than about regular hotels. That kind of stands to reason because you can imagine that the average Airbnb, it's just someone who's renting out their home. They're not going through the, the normal hotel style regulations. So maybe it's a little bit more of a lottery. And you can imagine that many Airbnb operators, even though they're not supposed to, might want to sneak hidden cameras in there in case somebody trashes the place. They don't have the resources of a hotel chain. Having said that, we also recently wrote on Naked Security about a South Korean hotel chain, which was you know, under the hotel regulations. And the proprietors of this chain had been operating a scam where they were installing hidden cameras, they were filming guests having sex, and they were actually selling access to this to other sleaze bags. Now they did get caught. I imagine if they get convicted, then they're going to be in a world of trouble with the court because I don't see the court letting them off lightly. So the problem is that because cameras can be hidden and because it's hard to, for even for a hotel chain to check every room every day and make sure nobody's put one in there, there is always a background risk. So some kind of situational awareness and some kind of establishing trust before you check in is something that you can and should do. So this guy from the article who's written a blog post about this was able to scan for a hidden camera. Is there something that people can buy or an app that you would recommend that means that people would be able to detect the presence of cameras? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a question that several people have asked us and it's sort of the inspiration behind doing this subject on a Naked Security live video is that this guy did catch the camera. Go to our article on Naked Security and click through to his blog post. He explains how he found the camera, but be very well aware that in his article, he makes it abundantly clear, and we absolutely agree with this, that he kind of got lucky because he found it because of the way it was installed, which won't always let you discover it. So from his blog post I've handily borrowed. The first thing that he kind of got lucky because if you look at this photograph you'll see it's a picture of the roof in the in the main room and you'll see there are two smoke detectors in one room. Very unlikely. That raised his suspicions obviously. Why are there two smoke detectors? Maybe one of them's bogus and indeed upon inspection it was pretty obvious that it had some kind of secret module in there and he jammed some, he jammed some toilet paper over the lens while he sat down and figured what he was going to do. So the first thing is a visual inspection. He got fortunate. The camera was hidden, but it was kind of hidden in plain sight where, if you know what you're looking for, it was big enough and bad enough that he was able to find it. The other thing he did, he did install an app and it did help. He used a wireless scanning app and after he'd connected to the room's own Wi-Fi, he did what's called a Wi-Fi network scan. So he's not looking for the available networks. He used a program, I can't remember which one he used. There are loads of them on Google Play. He used one, and it's a little bit technical there, but he listed all the devices that were actually connected to the network. And you'll see they're there. Some of them have names. Some of them have what are called IP numbers. Those are the network numbers given out to the devices that are connected. And the one at the bottom of that list, it said China Dragon Technology Limited. He didn't recognize that vendor. He didn't think that was any device that he connected, like it wasn't his phone, it wasn't his laptop, it wasn't the router. So he decided to dig a little bit further. And because that camera was connected to the same network, he was able to see it. 
He then used a program, he used one called Network Mapper. There are many more. What you can do is once you've identified a suspicious device on the network, he actually did what's called a port scan. Don't worry if you're not technical, but that's the result he got out. And if you are techy enough to do this, you'll see that the results he got there is those are the services that the camera is visibly and openly advertising. And you should see there's one there called R, um, what is it, RTMP, and one called RTSP. Now, if you use Google or if you know your network terminology, that's real-time streaming protocol and real-time messaging protocol. Basically, those are telltale signs of a camera. However, as he admits in the article, he got lucky. Firstly, the guy could have connected to the camera to a completely different wireless network that when you scan for wireless networks, you'd think was the next door neighbor and he wouldn't have the password, so you wouldn't be able to connect to it. Or he could have used a camera that works like a car dash cam, where it just records offline onto an SD card and you come back and get the footage later if you need it. So the problem is he kind of got fortunate. And just as an aside, I thought this was a rather informative picture. I got this from Andrew Barker's blog post again. I think he went on eBay and looked for, you know, what kind of cameras can you buy? This is the smallest one he can find. That is a Phillips head screw on a human finger. And if you look very carefully in the middle, you can see a tiny little lens hidden in the middle there. So I imagine the quality wouldn't be very good, but good luck finding that camera without peering into everything and spending hours doing it. So if you know what you're doing, firstly, anybody can do a visual scan. You can look around for cameras that are likely to be there. If there are any, they're supposed to, you're supposed to have been informed about them in the Airbnb listing. So if you see a camera that doesn't match what was in the description, be suspicious. Go and look for evidence of things that kind of seem to have weird holes at the wrong place or evidence of a little lens that you didn't expect and be very suspicious. If you know what you're doing, you can use apps that will scan for unexpected devices or identify cameras on a network. But bear in mind that if you do find something bad, then you know for sure you're being spied on. But if you don't find anything, unfortunately, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So just to put you on the spot, Doug, can you recommend any of these apps that you can use? Well, I haven't tried any of them, so I'm not going to recommend. There was one that I mentioned there, which was he used Network Mapper. Um, the, the one that I usually use, it's a very well-known, uh, a very, pair of very well-known open source tools, and many of them have been ported or made available on mobile phones. Um, the the best-known tool for scanning networks for what devices are on is a tool called Kismet, so go and search for that. And probably the best known tool for scanning a network or scanning a device to see what services it's listing out for is a program called NMAP, short for Network Map. If you can get your head around those tools, and there are many versions of them that are wrapped up to make them easier to use, then you are three quarters of the way to being a good uh, network mapping person, and you have a good chance of finding out what's on the network. Just a word of warning, tools like NMAP can be intrusive, they go out and probe devices. So if you've got permission to be on the network, say in an Airbnb, I think it's reasonable that you should do a port scan. But if you're in a hotel or in a coffee shop or you're at work and you run NMAP, you can interfere with the correct operation of the network. So if you're not sure, if you're on a network that's being provided as a public service, don't go scanning it for fun unless you have permission or it's unless it's clear in the terms and conditions that you can. You should only do it if you think you need to find something that could put you at a disadvantage, like in this particular case. So don't scan where you're not supposed to be. Don't scan at work because you could get into trouble because your IT department may not want you to. But those tools, if you can learn how to use them, they can be useful, but don't always find the problems uh, you know, when you're in Airbnb, a hotel room or wherever it is. Perfect. Thanks, Doug. So some of the advice was to try and avoid hotels that don't necessarily have a good reputation. Um, but even if you're in a prestigious hotel, could an employee or someone who frequents the hotel hide a camera there and then go back and retrieve it later? Well, if you think of the size of a modern car dash cam that you can buy in the UK, you can get perfectly reasonable ones for, what, 30, 40, 50 pounds. They're about this size. They've got a little suction cup so you can stick them on any dashboard. And those are made so that they're easy to handle and they'll fit in your pocket and not get lost. The actual electronics is really, really tiny. They take an SD card, which is sort of the size of your little fingernail. So in theory, yes, hiding cameras that record the last so many hours of video and then you come back and get it later, it is possible. 
Um, I'd imagine that in the same way that hotels have procedures and policies about who's allowed to clean the rooms and what they're supposed to do in checks and balances, that a good hotel chain probably looks for stuff that's been left behind in rooms that is not supposed to be there. Anything that could cause, that one guest has left behind that could cause harm to the next guy. So, you know, a, a reliable hotel chain, this shouldn't happen, but it is very difficult to guard against this in the same way that it's very difficult to walk down the street without thinking, hey, that guy's got his phone out, I wonder if he's taking a photograph. Sometimes you just have to go with your intuition. That's about it, really. Cool. So we haven't had that many questions in the comments yet, but do remember, guys, you can post them at any point and we will get back to you. But I've just got one for you, Duck, which is okay, about cameras that aren't necessarily hidden but are in plain sight, even, you know, cameras that you would expect to be there. Should you ever be worried about them? Do they pose a risk? Actually, that, that, that is... That's not about finding hidden cameras, but it's still important is that you're right. There are places like, imagine the lobby of a prestigious hotel. They probably have security cameras in case some rogues come in and try and mug people. Your bank will have security cameras in case there's a robbery. ATM lobbies, they'll normally have security cameras and so on. If you visit the UK, many visitors are shocked at how surveillance uh, happy we are. There are cameras all over the place and they're supposed to be signposted. In many cases, they're really obvious. And yes, they do pose a risk because if you think about it, every time you get out your phone, I'll try and let me lock this one. Every time you get out your phone and you unlock it and you get a, on mine, they get a keypad like that. It's all black on mine. And you go and you type in your keys. If there's a camera up there and you can see that it's there, then that camera, you don't can't be quite sure who's going to review that footage, quite how trustworthy they might be. And obviously, if you've typed in your pin and it's clearly visible, then they could um, recover details about what you're doing. In fact, crooks do this in bank ATM lobbies, where they put hidden cameras that can actually catch you typing in your pin when you're putting in your card to withdraw cash. So it's a good idea that there are a few times every day when what you're typing in on your laptop or on your phone is much, much more important than what you're typing at any other time, mainly because it's an unlocked code. So don't be shy about covering up your phone about hiding your phone by putting it towards yourself. If there are other people around, don't be shy about asking them to turn away or turning away yourself. All of that's important. So yes, even if a camera isn't hidden, the fact that it's recording you can be a problem. And the great example of this is, as some of our readers will remember this, there was a big internet meme last year when Kanye West uh, went to see DJ Trump, the President of the United States, and of course that was all filmed for the, cam for, for the, for the, for the world to see, and they're having this discussion, and Kanye West whipped out his mobile phone and said, oh, I'll show you this, Mr. President, and he tapped in his code, which was oh, 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 lots of zeros. And everyone was laughing at Kanye West saying, oh, what a buffoon he's had. He's got eight zeros or something as his pin code. That's no good. Well, firstly, maybe he was smarter than you think. If I were going to be in that position, I'd change my pin code to all zeros when I knew I was going to be on camera, and then I'd change it to back to the real code in the privacy of my own home later. The other thing is, if you've got a super complicated passcode, like if Kenya West had, had a more complicated passcode, it would still have been on camera. And once it's recorded, that means that somebody can go and look later and recover it and they know something that you intended to keep secret. So don't be afraid to shield what you're doing, put your hand over something, put your wallet over while you're typing in your pin, and in a shop, if there are people around, don't be afraid to kind of hug or, you know, sort of spread eagle the, the, the keypad, and never be ashamed to ask your friends or other people around to turn away when you're typing in a password on your laptop. They should do it as a matter of professional politeness, whether that's a staff member in the bank or your friends, but don't feel shy to say to them, by the way, would you mind looking away? This is not for your eyes. So that's my advice. A lot of, uh, sorry, the wrong way around. A little bit of caution goes an awful long way. Perfect. Excellent advice as always, Dirk. And do remember, you can comment your questions below. I know this is a big topic, so we will get back to you at any time that you post them below. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. And until next time, stay secure.